rolling in the sands of the Pacific Ocean beaches. The coast is a beautiful area within the park. Jagged cliffs and sandy beaches meet the waters of the Pacific Ocean. Sea stacks add contrast to the view, and wildflowers blossom with color, flowing gracefully with the gentle breezes of spring. The first known people to live in this area were the ancestors of the Yurok, Toloa, and Cholula tribes. The indigenous people of this land were very fortunate. Life was good. They had mild weather with plenty of food and natural materials to work with and prosper. They lived along the coast and near streams in villages. The Yurok, the largest of the three tribes, were known for their canoe building skills. The redwood forest supplied the natives with plenty of timber for them. They would hollow out redwood logs, producing sleek ocean-going canoes. The Yurok would trade their canoes to other Native American tribes nearby. These neighboring tribes preferred the sturdy Yurok canoes over their own. Fish were the Yurok's main source of protein with salmon as their most abundant catch. The natives would also go to the prairies to hunt for deer and elk, and to collect acorns, their main vegetable staple. Because of the natural boundaries of the northwest coast, the coastal natives remained virtually untouched by the influence of white man for many years. The first Europeans arrived by sea around 1775. The Redwood Coast area was ignored, though, because of a lack of deep-sea harbors. In 1828, Jedediah Smith led a group of explorers through the land of Redwood National Park. He is believed to have been the first Anglo to explore the north coast by overland route. Because of the dense forest, this route was very difficult to travel. The discovery of gold in the mid-1800s brought miners and settlers to the area. Trails were opened up using the routes started by the natives. The new settlers quickly built towns on what once was Native American land. Sawmills went up to meet the building demand brought on by the gold rush and logging of the smaller trees began. Soon, gold rush fever gave way to redwood fever. Timber companies acquired publicly owned forest land. Production increased rapidly. Because of the increased technology of machines and logging equipment, the amount of logging greatly increased in the 1950s and 1960s. Of the original two million acres of redwoods, only about 300,000 acres remained by the mid-1960s. This really brought on the emergent need to establish a national park. In 1968, after a hundred years of logging, Congress authorized the establishment of Redwood National Park and President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the act into law. In 1980, Redwood National Park was declared a World Heritage Site by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. The World Heritage Convention has established a system of international cooperation and assistance through which natural and cultural properties of outstanding universal value to mankind 